And it's live. Um, <laughs> I think um's the first way I should start this out all the time. I always look around like, uh, is it go here, here, there? All right. Making sure it's live. I always pull up a little second screen over here. Make sure it does the thing it says it's doing. Welcome to Vlog Thursday. Um, oh, man. 311. The 311. Yeah. <laughs> uh first time live is it like the wan show of ltt do we have to wait uh i don't know they make you wait <laughs> oh are we having fun before the end of the new year yes join the business technicality channel brett and jason are definitely uh, having some fun over there i'm going to join them in some fun as well at some point but people ask about the business videos. They have some really good insight they're sharing on there. So now that that channel's picking back up, I'm making sure to remind people that you check it out because people have asked what happened to the business content. And I know not everyone liked the business content. People definitely like the password manager content lately. Uh, that has been some popular, you know, how to install Bitwarden, for example. But if you're interested in the business side of things, because, you know, I do run a business. Jason runs a business. Brett kind of runs my business. So all of those things combined means there's a wealth of knowledge that they share. And uh, hey, check it out. That that channel there is um, definitely fun. It's it, I, I still like talking about some of the business stuff. I just took a little break from it myself because I have so much other content I'm creating. Hey, everyone. Hey, Travis. It's funny because now that Travis works at Lawrence Systems, he still gets to watch the vlog. <laughs> I don't know. Is that work-related? Seems work-related. <laughs> Why not? Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello from the land down under. Oh, let's see. What do we have here? All the networking fans. Yes, lots of networking people here. First time catching me live. Awesome. Greetings and hallucinations from Seattle. Ooh, two more weeks, and yes, we got to do something special for the 313. That's the Detroit area code for those of you not from the Detroit area. And uh, there's there's that long rap history of you represent things based on the area code. <laughs> uh, the live shenanigans. Shenanigans for sure. Watch video and Bitwarden today. Their pricing model for self-hosted solutions. What is, their pricing model is the same whether you self-host it or not. Their pricing is on their website. So I won't date the video by putting it there, but just go to the website, go to pricing. It's just scroll down. They have all the details of uh, all the information with the self-hosted. You can self-host the free version uh, as well with Bitwarden. Lots of interesting password management content. Yes. And I figured that's, um, am I beta testing the unified Bitwarden? Uh, for those of you who don't know, Unify has a, another installer they're working on called the Unified version. I just haven't really had time to test it. Uh, it looks fine. I, I'm positive because they have such a good track record of being company. It's probably going to turn out well. It's just assembling it in a singular Docker container instead of several Docker containers. Uh, people, the people, excuse me, the people ask for it. Bitwarden delivered or is delivering it's in beta right now. So I haven't tested it. I, I don't have a real problem with the way they do service delivery now via Docker with multiple images. So um, I don't have a real pressing need to try it. So that's, it looks like the installer might be a little bit more complex than the current installer. The current installer actually works extremely well. That's why I did the video on it. Um, I, I thought about doing the video on the beta one. I'm like, ah, there's the, the instructions are more, I want to get people there the fastest possible. So that video is actually pretty short on how to, uh, for an uh, install tutorial. I think it is reasonably short. Been listening to podcasts at the Home Lab Show. Great content. Keep a good work. Awesome. From Belgium. You know, a while ago, someone sent us some Belgium chocolate uh, from Belgium. You know, I've heard the term like, Belgian chocolate's good, but then once I had had it, I can confirm it is definitely some of the best chocolate I've had. I don't really know it's different, but yeah, it's something about it was really good. Uh, three and three used to span the Tri County area, Wayne County, until the mid '90s when we got the seven three four. Yes, we had uh, seven three four, three one three, and there was one more prefix that they split. 
um, there's a couple of them there now, but yeah, the splits started, uh, you know, not enough area codes, not enough numbers, kind of like IPv6. Like we need it because we're running out of addresses. We're running out of phone numbers. So we had to have more area codes to split them up. And now that doesn't matter. <laughs> I really want to sell post pit room, but at the same time, I have a bunch of bad experiences that make me dislike Docker. Uh, I wish the solution doesn't use Docker. I just run it in its own VM with its own Docker because Docker, for, from their perspective, I get why they do it. The instructions are way shorter having them use Docker. If you wanted to reverse engineer how they do it, matter of fact, there's actually, um, I Googled it because I got curious. There's a there's a couple of utilities easy enough to find in Google search them and know I haven't tested them. There's a way to undocker things. You could take Docker and then convert them into flat images and then update all these components individually. It would make service delivery harder, but you could do it. Um, the reason a lot of companies use Docker is to make it really easy to say, hey, here's these different Docker containers. Let's update this module and send it down to them. By doing it in that methodology, uh, it makes service delivery easier. So you're not dealing with, well, I have all these little you know, problems and things like that from a support perspective. So I get why they put it in Docker. But also, if you don't like Docker for whatever reasons, um, then you know, you can always try to flatten it, but I just run it in its own VM because it's not very uh, processor intensive. Uh, and that way it's portable and it's secure and I can back it up. And if I needed to restore that entire VM with all the container information in it, with all the password information right back to a, a particular state, it would be easy to do. It's a extremely minimal install too. Uh, that's why I'm not worried about it. It's not like it takes up a lot of space. Make it, maybe a video idea. What do you do with a firewall? Whitelisting, blacklisting pattern, pro con for me. I kind of like whitelisting. Um, I don't do the block listing like that. You know, I use PF blocker to block some things, but trying to whitelist the internet and only allow certain sites, that's a fool's errand. Uh, that's going to waste a lot of time and probably not going to be very effective. Do, you know, you could probably try to establish some baseline of how many websites you go to, but I uh, it, that wouldn't be easy. Uh, I have Bitwarden exposed to the internet, so I can uh, pass for syncs and mobile network phone. Any considerations I think about uh, further secure my install? I mean, the moment you open up to the internet, you at some point, I would almost say if you're going to have it exposed, maybe just go ahead and have them do it. Unless you feel that you can be absolutely on top from the time they announce if this happens, there's a flaw that would allow someone who has access to do something. How quickly could you react? That's the question when you self-host and expose things that you're trying to answer. So if you have this exposed and someone's able to get to it and because of some flaw that was found and they have a patch for it, how who's who's better at patching things? The people that run Bitwarden and have a 24-17 manning it or yourself? It's just a question. Maybe you are really good at it and great. Now you have your answer. I don't have the answer for you. I just give you the parameters. <laughs> Uh, can you use file attachments with the free edition of Bitwarden? That's a good question. Let's look. Because I, I don't use file attachments on the paid version. So uh, let's find out if it works on the free version. Let's go ahead and uh, I have my self-hosted install. So we will share the screen of that. Present, share screen, Chrome tab, Bitwarden Vault. I was wanting to do a few uh, things today with Bitwarden. So I already have it pulled up. Got the password pulled up over here that don't worry, I'll even share it with you because it doesn't really matter to me. It's just a password I generated for this demo account. Um, let's zoom it in a little bit, make it a little easier to see. Uh, let's see, can we attach things? I think so. Where do you do attachments? Yeah, bear with me while I figure out where the attachments go because I new option. Default match detection, new URI. I don't see an attachment option. Not there. It's not a feature I use in case you didn't know. Send has the ability to attach files. So yeah, I guess if I attach these files here, new send. But you're right. I thought there was a type login secure notes folders identity. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see it. I don't use that feature. I never attach files to this. I put things in notes all the time. Um, links, Boolean. I use this constantly. The custom. I love the customizable fields. But no, I don't see. 
a way to do a file attachment in here. I see it with the, you can attach files with send though. And obviously this is, so new send, uh, we want to make it a file. Okay, premium required uh, for sending files. So I guess you do need that. Been watching uh, you and hope starting Ace. Been watching you and Mac and hope and start a side hustle. Cool. Greetings from Dublin, Ireland. You bet we're going to solve video. It's time perfectly getting away from last pass quickly as possible. Great. What's my opinion on Vault Warden? I mean, it it's an alternative project, but I don't have a use case for it. I mean, I, I said that in my video the other day. Like, if you want to do Vault Warden, go ahead. But I prefer to support the um, project maintainers themselves, who, who, which is Bitwarden. They're the ones that publish all the code top to bottom. So why would I want to use a third party who hasn't gone through the same level of auditing that the first party has? Because it's not a fork. It's a, a rewrite in Rust. It used to be called Bitwarden RS, but... Uh, there was obviously some name confusion by doing that. So it became Vault Warden. I don't have a use case for it. I prefer to run the real deal. If you want to run a third party's implementation of it, that's fine. A fool's errand. So fools E R D I'm sure there's a Wikipedia entry in this. Fool's errand. Oops, I closed the sharing. <laughs> a fool's errand prank is type of practical joke where newcomer group typically go at work by sense, giving them impossible, nonsensical task by older, more experienced. So, yes. Uh, whitelisting blasting for an internal network. That I don't know what you're asking. What are you whitelisting or blacklisting? Uh, do you use Bitwarden to share, to store SSH key pairs? I do not. Um, I haven't had a need for that. So that's not something I've done. Um, you can go back over to Bitwarden and vaults. I mean, I guess you could put the um, keys in here. I, I don't. Uh, secure, you can put a secure note. I don't know. I wouldn't, I don't really have a use case to put them in there. Uh, just a thought, depending on the content of file type, you could use secure note. Yeah. Any hot sauce you like on ribs? Mm, a lot of different ones. <laughs> 10 minutes to catch up at 2x speed. All the way from Kuwait. Awesome. I have some. Uh, Going to need some nice sauces for them. All right. Fool's error. No productive outcome of an activity. Yes. Have you ever used Nginx Proxy Manager? Comparison HA. I'm strictly using it for reverse proxy. Uh, haven't used it. Some people seem to like it. I just, I like HA Proxy. I have it everywhere I need it to be. So I haven't. Like, when there's not a compelling reason for me to use another tool, I don't always use that tool. Um, so that's, yeah, that's one of those things. Now, KeyPass is, a, is the other one. And I guess that's the other one I wanted to bring up because this comes up a lot. And I'm working on it, uh, a dedicated video for this. Did I close KeyPass? I thought I had it open already. Key pass. Uh, now Tom has to remember the password to his key pass. I didn't use a good password. I just used a password. So how can we share? You know, I think I just have to do stop sharing and share a screen because it's its own. So we're going to share a window. A screen. There we go. Um, there we go. There's KeyPass. Now, KeyPass is cool. I, I don't have any problem with it. If you want to use KeyPass, as a matter of fact, this is something that, you know, people brought up, and I think this is a good point. KeyPass is a good, solid 
password manager. I don't know of any flaws in it. I believe enough people are looking at it. Not, not that that absolutely means it's been absolute code reviewed, but enough people are probably looking at it. And the fact that it's local to your computer with a database, the attack vectors are more limited. Someone has to be on your system in order to get into your key pass instance. But if you're an individual, you're a home labber, and you're going, do I really need to set up a Docker container to run Bitwarden locally? Probably not. Um, for individual use, I think this is great. I don't think there's any problem with it. And I'm, you know, trying to figure out if it's worth doing a video on it. Um, you know, you can save little things in here. I was wishing it had an actual, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a plugin for it. Um, some type of, oh, you know, one-time password in there. It'd be kind of cool if it did that as well. I, I threw just some OTP testing in there, uh, playing around with stuff to see if, you know, just a goof around with it. But, I think it's a good password manager. It just doesn't scale when you run a business and you have a lot of people that you need to share with. Now, I know you do have multi-user support in KeePass, so more than one person can access the database, but there's no ACLs in it. There's no, you know, I can't build really nice granular permissions. It doesn't seem to have any uh, clear audit log that I'm able to see. So for an individual, I think it's got all the features you need and even has, and I haven't tested this, but it does offer if you go into the uh, settings, uh, where is it under somewhere here? Is it secure browser integration. It does even offer browser integration. So it's got all the, the right things you probably need in a password manager. It's got a password generator, um, all this good stuff, but it just doesn't scale to the business use cases or the multiple users, multiple access lists and security logging that you would need from a more robust password manager. So that's kind of my opinion on it. As people ask about it, and I thought maybe I'll put together like some of the use cases of why you would want to use one or the other. Um, I, like I said, it, it's a good system. It's not like I think it's bad or you shouldn't use it. Um, it just has, I mean, it, it's even cross-platform. Um, but I, I want to set up the browser integration and things like that before I actually do it. Uh, let's see, you can attach files to key pass. That's true. Uh, I use secure notes and upload files. Excited for the next step, Unify 3. Yeah, if they when they get to it. Uh, regarding SSH keys, have you used SSH certificates in production? Nope, I have not. I've not used SSH certificates. Odd question, recommendation, pay as you go, SIM carrier for backup modem. Uh, not a problem we ever run into. Uh, we just, as a matter of fact, we, I think we have a, one or two clients on Starlink now. Um, so I, I think that's going to kill some of the backup uh, cell carriers. Teleport is a secure solution. Teleport is really cool. Um, I've played around a little bit. I My only problem is I don't like the fact that it has to load a daemon on something in order to do the connection. Um, it, you got to load the teleport tool on each system, but I don't think it's bad. It's just one extra step that I'm mixed on, but I think it's really cool. I like it's logging. Um, Christian Lempa, uh, that network life, he's done some videos on teleport. Uh, they're a sponsor of his channel as well, but th th it looks like a great product. I think it's cool. It's open source. It's free. Try it out. Um, it's been on my list to try to do it. I think Teleport reached out to me once or twice, wanted to uh, offer me some sponsored um, time with it. I, I didn't take him up on the offer. Maybe I'll reach out to him and um, have him sponsor a video or something. But the, the product itself seems uh, good. You prefer Apache over Nginx because of the familiarity with Apache system. It comes down to what you're most familiar with is going to be what probably works better. People using unfamiliar things are more likely to not secure them properly. <laughs> KeyPass and XCloud works great. We're using Keeper, Keeper Security at Work, hoping it's better. I don't know anything about it. I never used it, so I got nothing. No comment on it. Uh, that's key pass. Uh, that's key pass XC to be specific. Key pass XC does OTP. Okay. Interesting. Oh, tons of people are still using Excel. That's for sure. We were doing a video on Cloudflare Tunnel. I'm a bit iffy on it. Yes, I actually built a Cloudflare Tunnel uh, just before um, just before this video. 
I started playing around with it. I'm mixed on it myself. My problem I have with it, and this is the part I want to really dive into on it. You are trusting Cloudflare when you do this. And I mean, people are real excited about it and that's cool. But the problem really comes down to who do you trust? I'm not saying Cloudflare is not a place to trust, <clears throat> but you are putting Cloudflare in your trust circle by doing this. Let me pull up the documents on it. And I think that's the part that just confuses me because people um, seem so quick to like, oh man, Cloudflare, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, you're trusting Cloudflare. You're also running on a proprietary service um, because, I mean, it's open source. So it's not like we're not, we don't get to see what it's doing. We know it's a reverse proxy, essentially, where you load the Cloudflare service on your server and here's the browser, here's Cloudflare's network, and then it jumps into the proxy. It's not anything complicated, so to speak. Not if you're familiar with proxies, I should say. So I guess it's a relative term to say it's not complicated. But because all you do to define what this proxy does is go to the Cloudflare control panel once it's attached, and you can say, talk to this server, talk to that server. Okay, who's stopping that server besides the Cloudflare dashboard from doing something else, like talking to a server you don't want it to talk to and do public exposure on. That's my concern with it. You're you're trusting Cloudflare where you control it, their dashboard, which I think is secure. I don't know of any problems with Cloudflare. They seem to run a tight ship over there, but you are adding them to the trust circle. So it's zero trust, but trust us. Like so many of these zero trust solutions. So... <laughs> So, yes, I'll be doing a video on it soon. Uh, where's Tom going to be in 2023? I don't know. Um, I was just looking at that because I usually announce where I'm going to be. I don't have anywhere I'm going to be that I know. I have not booked a flight or a hotel for anything in 2023. So, <laughs> uh, hey, Tom, true or false? Simply increasing RAM capacity on Windows computer does not necessarily make a computer faster or prevents it from slowing down. Uh, it just gives you more headroom to run applications. It's not necessarily a speed thing, but if you are running out of room because you don't have enough memory, then it will speed things up. But you have to know if you're running out of memory before you can answer the question, will adding more memory make it better? Uh, do you have Google Password Manager built into Chrome now that they have one for uh, option for device encryption? I mean, I think Google does a good job with security on things, but one of the problems I kind of have with it, if it just authenticates with your Google account and someone's able to steal your session with your Google account, then would they have your passwords? Do they have an extra layer, like a master password for the passwords that are managed in there? That's the question. If it's just authenticated against your Google account, then um, I don't know if that's enough. You know, I, I, can it be session stolen rather easy or not? In the past, I know it could, and they did a lot of re-engineering to fix that aspect of it. So they fixed the session stealing part to an extent, but there's still some issues I have with it. Does it prompt you for the passwords? Does it autofill them? Does it lock like a normal password manager? Those are, I don't know the answer to that question. If all that answer is no, then I wouldn't use it. <laughs> uh, uh, does HE proxy use a lot of resources in PFSense? No, not at all. If we route ConnectWise control through it, nope, it works fine with ConnectWise control. It does not take a lot of resources. Let's see. Anyone use HashiCorp Vault? Um, I know, I, I think Jay used to use it for Learn Linux TV. I've never used it though. I think Jay brought it up a couple times. Have you tested in Genius? What do you think about that? Looked at some of the level one stuff. You know, I don't understand why Wendell likes it so much. I've talked to Wendell. I mean, I think Ingenious has the hardware part figured out. Like they don't make bad hardware. They make terrible software. Um, so I'm not a big fan of it. So. Uh, Bitwarden Pro uses YubiKey. Any problems? We I use a YubiKey with... Um, for Fido, not for YubiKey, but it works with both. You can do YubiKey and it does Fido. So I'm partial to the Fido version. What do you use for DDoS protection? Cloudflare is good for DDoS protection. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Uh, I've had a look at threat stop for PFSense, carry it, manage DNS, IP filter service, decided not to solve plugin, especially not enough. So you heard of threat stop, never heard of it. And uh, I'm, I think it's oversold that you can protect things with at the firewalls side. Um, I, everyone's trying to sell a solution on there and most things seem to pass right through those firewalls. Don't forget Chrome is a memory hog. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, is Synology, NAS, Docker, Bitward, and only accessible OpenVPN radius via PFSense router secure enough or better OpenVPN radius? Synology, NAS, Docker, Bitwarden with OpenVPN radius OTB via VSense. Seems fine. What are your thoughts on Duo? Um, I, it's okay. I don't, I've used it. Uh, I think the simplicity of the product is kind of cool to see yes or no. But any time that I've talked about, uh, and there was an event that where MFA fatigue was an issue, it's usually because they sent a million Duo push notifications. Why Duo doesn't have rate limiting by default, I don't know. Um, I think that's weird, but I don't think it's a bad product or anything like that. Who claims using private key generated from your screen lock combination with your Google account and crypto before uh, syncing with Google? It's always logged in, though. The it's always logged in is enough reason for me not to want to use it. Google Password Sync has a master password, but you can't change it. It autofills passwords, but you can't view them without uh, operating system. Okay. Yeah, I don't. It sounds like a cut down version of a uh, password manager. Firefox password manager look with master password so far is good. I can do export and backup externally. Interesting. I'm considering switching to Bitwarden, but not hosting it myself. What's your opinion on that? I think it's really a solid tool. My personal Bitwarden, not my business one, is completely just hosted by Bitwarden because uh, it works. It's great. I don't have any problems with it. Um, that's because I, I keep my personal and business one separate and uh, because there's all my game accounts in there and things like that. And I have no problem. I just use their servers for it. So. Oh, you know, this is the dumbest thing. So let's, um, I, I don't understand this. So let's share this tab instead. Now, I almost want to be a fly in them all for uh, how this stupidity happened. So here's Duo, the company that, by the way, was bought by Cisco. See a little Cisco up there at the top. Duo started actually here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh, great people. I met a few of them, including uh, Doug, the owner. Uh, awesome people, sponsored events in the startup community, ha background in the hacking community. Uh, everything's great. But Duo became pretty big, pretty fast with a good product. And later, Google is sitting there going, what are we going to name a call product? Well, the guys on the street on this company called Duo, should we call it that? Hey, why not? <laughs> you know, because I think Duo was bought by Cisco before Google even decided to uh, build out Duo, the calling thing that I think they later canceled. So I don't understand why Google called it that. It's one of those, I is there a lack of names or a lack of creativity of what we should call things? <laughs> so I don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, it's Cisco Duo now. Uh, Cisco is where products go to get monetized. That's that's what Cisco's uh, thing is. They they buy stuff to monetize it. So, <laughs> oh, let's see. Yeah, different segments, so no treatment. I don't know. It's just silliness there. I don't really get it. Ah. Thank you for all your videos all the way. Helping me out a lot. Also getting uh, new points of view. Hey, awesome. Glad I can help. Yeah, Cisco monetizes it. Cisco doesn't kill products. They just increase the licensing fees. I do like Aegis. Aegis is cool. Um, I think Aegis is a great tool. Uh, sorry, those of you that are not you 
excuse me, sorry for all of those of you that are on iPhones. Aegis isn't available for iPhones. I don't really know why. Um, but yes. <laughs> do an RDP gateway cool, disconnect your attempts to reconnect. If you're not watching, push his prompts to do his courteous, locked, annoying, yeah. <clears throat> and uh not everybody knows this, but Duo uh has a fail open and there was a hack, and I want to say it was the hack of the Red Cross. It was a medical facility or something medical related. Um, what the threat actors did was actually create host entries so Duo couldn't reach Duo servers, and Duo has a fail open. See, they were on the server but didn't have access to users' accounts but did have the user passwords. So to get around Duo, they failed duo open by blocking the host entries of it now you can modify duo so it fails closed but the default option is fail open and we know everyone installs everything with the defaults so yeah i don't think anyone's gonna say kaseya hosting you know if i could throw in a jail and true nas good idea i wouldn't host things in jails because they're kind of going away that means you're using true nas core um, in Chernas scale, there's, you're using Docker and Kubernetes. So it's probably a better idea to do it that way. Um, I haven't really done any testing with jails and unify. I have no idea how good it works or if it works at all. Why do you make a video and using Grafana, Influx TV and Telegraph plugin PF sense? Uh, I don't use any of those things is why I don't make a video. Uh, maybe if I ever start using them, I'll do a video. A lot of the videos, and actually most of the videos I do, are driven by me using the product, me using it in production and sharing my experiences as we deploy them. Um, it's a lot harder for me to do something that is something we wouldn't use in production. Now, I'll make an exception because I think it's interesting and there's some good and bad and that I want to share my thoughts on, like the Cloudflare tunnels. And to me, it's not like I'm learning a new technology. All I'm doing is using a different tunnel than some other tunnel server that's out there. Um, matter of fact, I tweeted today. Um, I probably find it in my tweets. And I'll pull it up. I'll, I'll share the link with all of you as well, of course. But this is what I had tweeted out today. And I'll throw it here in the system. There's a lot of tunneling software out there. There's a lot of different ways to tunnel. That's what that's the part that started me on this because I was looking at so many people message me about the Cloudflare thing. I said, I'll take a look at it. I know Cloudflare's had it out for a little while. People seem to be getting excited about it. Um, but I just want to understand where the trust boundaries are. Who are you adding to your implicit trust when you use a Cloudflare tunnel? So that's why my interest in it is going to be coming from that perspective. Um, so that's as simple as that. But for the most part, most of my reviews are things I use. We'll keep an eye on this. Simple question. Authy, uh, is that easy to use to be secure? I don't know anything about Authy. Other than, I know what it is, but I've never used it. So I don't know how secure Authy is. I'll assume it's secure, but I, I've never looked to know one way or another. Uh, your videos help me get a lot more interested into firewall networking stuff. Currently, the OpenSense and Adele. Um, thanks for all the top notch check. Awesome. Next on my list is Docker is doing Docker backup. Moving new hosts would be a cool video about, um, hmm. Hosting a VM to run unified controller and true NAS works, uh, but beehive hypervisor is meh. I will completely agree with you that it definitely is meh. I actually like the, the hypervisor on, um, true NAS scale is better. So if we go over here to, whoops, virtualization, um, I've had better luck with this. This seems to work. The virtual machines inside of TrueNAS scale better. I'm going to do a video soon on this because I'm actually, I've been using it for a bunch of demo stuff I'm testing. So uh, it works. It's been working very well. What do you suggest for using DNS uh, sync using PFSense? We suggest using a pie hole. I use PF blocker and I haven't had a need to use a pie hole. I think pie holes neat. I did a video on it forever ago, but then I don't use it anymore. If you like using it, you like the reporting because people, it's funny because people will say, well, Tom, I want the reporting that pie hole has. Okay, then use it. 
well, but I don't want to have to set up a separate server. And I said, I don't know what the answer is then because uh, PFSense does not have the level of reporting that Pi-hole does. If reporting is something important to you, you're going to have to use something that has better reporting. Um, so, it, you know, I just don't have a use case for it because I don't care what I'm, I mean, it's a neat thing to see all the stuff you're blocking, but then I don't look at it again because it's not interesting to me over time. Uh you can update your unified device spreadsheet with the new unified Wi-Fi 6E. Probably. I need to do, I was, um, now that things are coming more in stock, uh, I'm going to probably do an updated video on all of them. Do you put your unified controller behind a firewall? Absolutely. I highly recommend doing that. <clears throat> How do I connect two to four ports and a four port neck and PF sense under one switch so they work under one DCP? Two to four ports from a four port NIC. That's not a great idea. Use a switch. You can bond ports together. I have a bonding video for PF Sense, but don't you don't turn PF Sense into a switch. It's not as ideal. Have you tried Linux KVM with cockpit for VMs? Um, not really. Spent over six hours today changing 220 pass from last pass, switching everything over. Bitwarden, all the last pen systems, just to be sure. Hey, you can't be too secure. Trust no one except yourself uh, for your data and passwords. Uh, I love that Authy has a desktop app. Makes it easier to copy TOTP codes. Launching my own MSP consulting business next week. No small part in getting started coming from you, Tom. Encouragement and sage advice. Hey, and check out our business technicality channel there, Simon. So I'm happy and congratulations on your new business you're starting. Uh, follow the business technicality channels, man. They're giving a lot of good tips over there with uh, Brett and uh, Jason. Head run to an issue with PFSense dual WAN failover DNS. You need to have multiple DNS servers uh, specified across both WANs. What's the right way to set up PFSense DNS a dual WAN failover? I don't know. I have to double check the documentation. Um, if not, just assign. Um, it, if you're using Google DNS, for example, assign both of them. Assign one to each one of the WAN. You could do it that way. Um, generally, the DNS is not that big of a deal because you, you're using the DNS resolver and PF sense, which is just going to use the, D, the, the default gateway and top is really good. Uh, and you did a video about it. How often you use a troubleshoot client issue. I'm not often. We just don't have, if we're the ones building the network, we don't have that many network issues. That's so it's not like we're using it all the time. Um, that's uh, I mean, it's nice to have it there if you're troubleshooting an issue, but, you I, when you don't have a lot of issues, you kind of end up not using it. Do you have any recommendations on resources for network rack cable management practices? Um, watch videos, do it the way you think it looks best and the way it's easiest. Um, that's there, I don't know if there's an easy way to say just these best practices. I like all the short cables and things like that. Um, I mean, I've got videos on how to build your home lab rack. I have a We, uh, you know, all these are just using those short cables. I just, you know, there's nothing real special about it. You, I like these. If you look at my DIY rack build, I show all the parts I use for this. They're just the same common parts that a lot of people use. So it's less, I mean, I guess best practice is going to be label everything, make it look pretty, use lots of short cables. <laughs> Don't use six foot cables when you can use six inch cables. Um, is a little, I don't know. I'm going to do some updated videos on it just to like show how we set all that up. But I have my DIY home lab rack video absolutely does cover all this. It covers at least all the pieces we use and generally how we set them up. Any client with Sophos firewall, Sophos guys asked to do a video about their firewall. Uh, if yes, or if you back, but some people seem to like it. I haven't found anything compelling about it. Uh, I've talked to a handful of people that don't like it that switched from it. And they said they used to use it. And we did some consulting for a few people that used it. And it said, it just was too buggy and they like PF sense better. I don't know if they didn't know the product. I didn't dig into it. That was what they were paying me to do. They were paying me to consult with them on PF sense. So I, you know, they had general things they didn't like. They didn't like the UI. They didn't like Sophos support, blah, blah, blah. But I don't, that's not very, 
um, objective. Like I've not used it, but I don't have any compelling reason to use it either. I don't look at it and go, wow, this solves all the problems I'm having and all the gaps I have right now. That's usually what compels me to use a product. In a recent video, you showed an SMB is slower VPN. How do you recommend sending internal SMB shares remotely? I don't recommend uh, doing SMB shares remotely. That is the bottom line. Don't do it that way. Don't do it over SMB. You can use Synology Drive. You can use SyncThing. You can use OneDrive. Those are all better ways than trying to transfer over SMB over high latency connections. High latency and SMB connections don't get along well. They're not good. Um, so it's using something that's more modern and designed to deal with latency between connections. I did that quad NIC port, made it to a switch. CPU used to a stupidly high and sometimes uh, ghost, <laughs> ghost and reconnect one minute later. Yeah, that's why I tell people not to do it. It's always buggy. Everyone tells me about problems they have with it. So are you a NIC8 partner? Looked into membership, only 10% off MSP, but not sure if there are any other incentives. I run an MSP. Nope, we are not a partner. I didn't see 10% um, off MSRP doesn't matter to me much. Uh, what do you think about the company Enpass? Never heard of them uh, before this moment, so I have no opinion on them. What's the Aruba switch in the rack? Uh, do I have the model number on here somewhere? It's the one I did a review on. It's a Aruba 8 port. It's one of the Aruba Instanon 8 ports uh, PoE. Um, nothing special. I had it. It's it's a standalone switch. And uh, these particular lines on the bottom are all my IPMI controllers that are on a separate network, not a separate VLAN. They're a completely separate lockdown network that doesn't have VLAN access. That's for IPMI. Um, well, I should say it doesn't have VLAN access with my main Unify. So it's, it's actually got its another set of VLANs on it, but it's all subdivided out and locked down. You deploy a lot of Sophos firewalls. They're great all around box for the price, but occasional strange issues. Interesting. Uh, can't remember the name of it. Oh, that label printer. Yeah, let's pull that up because that label printer is cool. Um, I brought it. I, I don't know. It seems off brand almost for me to review this, but at least I'll share the link with you. Find it. It's this thing is like a con very consumer device, but boy, I like it. Um, it's called the Nimbot. So it's Nimbot. Let me get you the link to it. There, this is the Nimbot uh, label. This thing's like 29 bucks. It's so cheap. I love it. It works well. I've had it for, uh, hold on, let me get that. I, I bought this a year ago and I've been using it for a year and I can't believe how, it just stays in my backpack. Whenever I want to print something, I grab it on my backpack and use it. So uh, what do you back up at Word uh, database offline? Yes, but online in Google Drive and encrypted zip file, our clone. I use SyncThing. Uh, Fortinet used to have terrible, terrible security. Um, they've cleaned up their code a lot. So they seem much better here in 2022 going into 23 than they used to be. Preferred logging server, gray log all day. I love gray log. Forrester Enterprise Review has Q4 2022 has Sophos as top actually, so must be doing something right. Yes, if you would like to be in a Forrester Gartner Review, just buy lots of advertising and things like that, and you can get in a Forrester Review. I'm not that impressed with, you know, I guess it, it's needed to be done uh, where you have to have someone large enough to try and vet some of these companies to make sure they're not a fly by night. Uh, but I, all, it's everyone kind of knows indirectly, of course, indirectly, lots of these places are not very independent of how they review things. Let's just say. NFS also works terrible over uh, low high latency connections. Uh, have you experienced issues running DHCP based cable connections as a secondary WAN on PF sense? Nope. Not an issue. Uh, hey, Tom, matter of fact, 
ours is uh well no my oh well, mine at home is let me think yeah no mine is uh mine at home is dhcp the one at the office was dhcp our secondary and we changed it to static but we weren't having problems when it was dhcp but they're presently both static uh hey tom thank you for showing pf sense i have a slight connection customer remotely monitor their network cool uh, just, I just don't like the interface on, uh, Sophos firewalls. Oh yeah, that could be an issue. Hi Tom, thanks for your short reply to my question. Awesome. Let's see what else do we have here. Thought about buying one of those. Uh, afraid I'll never find labels for it again. Oh no, they've been around for a little while, so. And, and worst case is you spent $29 and I bought a lot of labels. I'm still not out of labels because the labels were so cheap. I bought a bulk of them. <laughs> I put stupid labels on stupid things too, by the way. <laughs> I've got all kinds of Rick Roll QR codes I made with them and stuff like that. It's been a fun tool. <laughs> I watched a lot of your videos on YouTube and never seen. You mentioned ESXi. You dislike it for some reason or you just find Proxmox a better option. No, I find XCP and G a better option. Um I, I especially since the ESXi was purchased. Oh man, I mean, it, it's certainly the more expensive option and gonna get more pricey as the bit as that whole deal goes through. Uh, they're just gonna be keep raising prices on it. So, uh, with Broadcom bottom, how does the battery storage life on an inbox? Really good. Um, I don't know exactly how many labels before it run out, but I know when I took it to a hacking event over a weekend. And I printed a lot of labels and put on, uh, stupid labels on things with Rick rolls and QR codes. I never ran out of battery. <laughs> I don't know how many it prints, though. I think it tells you, but I don't know. It uh, seems to run Greylog or Influxy on top of virtualization platform, but also seems excessive uh, to run a dedicated host for each. How do you strike a balance in the lab and office? Uh, I don't know. I don't have any. I don't have any balance. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to answer that question. You're right, Gartner and Forrester's rank most big companies and does not give any info on small companies that are doing well in the field. Correct. Hey, what Travis said, 163 watching, only 41 likes. Hit that like button. That helps the YouTube algorithm. I see a Super Micro 1U with 6 10 gig. RJ45s, four core, three and a half. Seems like a lot of fun. PF Sense box. Yes, that does. All the enterprise reviews have one item that is important to me. Bang for the buck. I could get 10 Unify for one Cisco. True that. Uh, I use the Brady BMP21 Plus, great for patch cable. Uh, and you do wire as press pricey. Yeah, the um, our wiring team has the really nice... I can't remember who makes them. Maybe brother. They're they're the expensive, like thousand dollar label printers that you can bulk label things. They got some really nice stuff. I want to. I got to do a tool review of all the tools that they have. Because um, if you're looking for the fancy professional tools, awesome. If you want the twenty nine dollar, keep it in your backpack. And um, when you feel inspired to make a QR code or something stupid and put it on a label and stick it on something, these are great. I don't know how long they'd hold up. I mean, but I've printed you know, a couple rolls of labels and it seems to work perfectly fine for 29 bucks. I can't, you can't beat it. Well, you can't, you can throw it away and buy another one. <laughs> uh, customer has TOTP physical key rings from five plus years ago. So, shame. We can't modernize. Yeah. Well, yeah. Gray log cluster video. Um, not likely. Brother P touch. Yes. Number of firewalls have been mentioned here today. Would you be willing to list firewalls from your favorite to least favorite? Or is that a fool's errand? <laughs> um, I don't know what the least favorite would be. I have no idea. Um, but favorite probably is still PF Sense. Um, runner up. I you know, I don't use it as much anymore. Uh, but Untangle is nice. I've never had problems with Untangle, but uh, I don't really know. I, I I think edge protection by firewalls and next generation firewalls is oversold. Um, so I think that's why more people are focusing on the endpoint protection for things because of that. But, you know, I, I don't really take the time to really rank them. Uh, 
I would not put Unify on my least favorite, though. The Unify firewalls, I complain about them, but they do have some use cases. I complain about them because people want them to do things that you may expect a firewall to do, but Unify has done that in a uh, weird way. I, I talked about the unusual way they do VPNs. They're getting better. They're still working on... Uh, it, it finally, if you are lucky enough to own a Unify Dream Machine SE, I think you can get normal WireGuard on it now. So they're getting better, but they're not my, you know, least favorite firewall. Least favorite firewall would be something horribly written and insecure. I don't really know. There's probably so many of them. It's, it's, it's hard to, uh, hard to evaluate all that. Facebook keeps suggesting a very similar one called JC Label Maker by Material. Never heard of it. I want to get good uh, use switch that runs Sonic or Cumulus Linux. Uh, like, but Info1 needs to open source switches. So this is hard. Uh, and Harvard's so got any experience or tips? No. That's actually, you know, I've had, uh, I had an odd consulting um, call where someone wanted, really wanted those switches and didn't want to pay the support contract from Dell. Cause uh, I think it's Sonic that Dell offers a support contract for. Um, at the enterprise level, I mean, it's a cool system. There's just not a lot of people that know it, and there's not a lot of documentation because it's just not widely used. Uh, Patrick from Serve the Home has covered it before. He's talked about switch operating systems, but he even said the same thing. There's not that it, it maybe there's a book on it that I'm not aware of. I've never really spent time looking for it, but I don't have any tips on it. Um, it's so niche. I would not take the time myself to learn it and do a video on it either. It's such a, a unique thing that's used by so few people compared to most other things. So while I think it's neat, and if you got a job working in a data center, you're likely to encounter it, but you're not likely to encounter it even in the mid-market. So small businesses know mid-market, still not really. It's so kind of exclusive because of the way it's managed to like data centers. I'm not saying there's not someone that doesn't have a stack of them at their house and they're an expert on it. That that always is the case with home labs. There's always some person who has built this incredible data center level equipment in their house. And hey, awesome for them. And if you're going to get a job at a data center, awesome. Uh, but I don't really have the time to learn it. We have to run three really old Dell power servers because payroll can't figure out new software. Yep. Uh, Dre Tech. Those are, they've had a lot of security issues in the past. I don't know if they've gotten any better. I just know they were in the news a lot for security problems. UDM SC with WireGuard works. Yes. Shorewall is the best firewall. I haven't heard of Shorewall in a while. <laughs> Tiny Cisco picks firewalls. Yeah. Uh, tea or coffee. I myself am a big tea fan. I am a coffee drinker during the morning and I like tea at night. Uh, uncaffeinated. Least favorite is Sonic Wall. Yeah, there's plenty of hate for Sonic Wall. I don't think a lot of people like those. Uh, is the app really asking everything on the moon? Oh, no. I mean, it wants access to photos because it, you can upload stuff from it, but. Um, I don't know. I didn't see anything. On, I don't remember seeing anything in the app that made me go, oh, no, this is terrible. Uh, it seems pretty, you know, OK. Download the app and try it. You can try it because well, if you're using Android, Android lets you go through and say yes or no to the permissions. So you can tell certain things. You can tell it not to use those things. So that's actually an option. Oh, my son's messaging me. <laughs> uh, that is fun stuff. Sonic fall. Sonic fail. There we go. Uh, Checkpoint had a weird way they did all the way, I should say, displayed the rules. Um, they didn't have it. So if I remember right, it's been a long time since I looked at Checkpoint. I don't use any of their stuff. My friend was a Checkpoint admin for a while doing firewalls. They have like this weird way they dump everything into like large menus of all the rules instead of breaking them out into the networks they belong to. I mean, it's just a different way of laying it out. It was funny because my friend preferred that when he switched to PFSense, um, but he preferred PFSense in the end because he didn't want to pay the money for the 
uh, checkpoint firewall. The VPN video was great. Did a project six weeks ago, switched all our sites over and IT users. Only thing you need to make sure is that the TS port is open to allow direct versus indirect connections. Lacking some context on it. Oh, tail scale port. Yes. <laughs> Firewall or paid wall? <laughs> we just changed the sonic wall. I am sorry that you have changed the sonic wall. But it's safe to say with WireGuard and user access with OpenVPN on a PFSense would be a good idea. Yes, I I don't think that's a problem. A site to sites, WireGuard is ideal for. Uh, OpenVPN has user management, so it's more ideal for users because it has users management, you know, that you can tie to things like Radius or Active Directory or different directories for authentication. Ah. Uh... It shouldn't be a 20-step process to forward ports. I know. It's been a while since I've used SonicWall, but my understanding is they're just as bad as they've always been. Thing is self hosting bit boarding. I stopped using LastPass two years ago, and I can't get, get it now. In the process of changing 300-plus passwords, many imported from LastPass and board. And that's a job, man. That is a big labor-intensive job. My concern, though, why are there good... Uh, why are there... Aren't there any good comparisons to open source firewalls versus the big company? Seems like they're afraid of it when it comes down to their security thoughts. It's not afraid of it. It's there's not a you 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 don't realize how much money these large companies spend. You know, let's throw a, a, an example out there. And if you talk about the booths at a trade show, like Black Hat or even uh, well, sub, like if you're working in the IT MSP services space, like I do, a booth. To advertise, like in forty, I bring this up because Fortinet was at one of the events I was at. That booth cost them forty thousand dollars to have the booth. That's just to get a booth to stand there. Then they got to pay people to be in that booth. Then they got to put some signs up and hand out some swag. Um, so you're talking about a sixty thousand dollar investment. Does an open source company have a sixty thousand dollar investment to do that? And then they have the channel partner programs, Fortinet. And Cisco and all these companies, they aren't just selling you a license. They have resellers who make money and commissions off selling these licenses. So you wonder why there's so much more advertising and noise out there for commercially paid firewalls. Well, that's because they have the budget for it and they spent the money. And the only way to get the money back is to come back and sell you a license and the cycle continues. Whoops. I don't know where I cut off, but uh oh, fixed <laughs> where I cut off. But that's the real cycle of them. The large companies are basically have the money to do this. The other ones do not. Ticketing system. Uh, we're using Freshdesk right now. My only issue with Tailscale is the rules. Building JSON rules isn't my thing. Hopefully, there'll be some integration with PF Central rules, make it easier to manage. Maybe. Why not site to site with OpenVPN and pre-shared key? You can. I just think WireGuard's better. Uh, is PFSense now completely okay with Intel 2.5 gig NICs? Uh, I know on the NetGate boxes it works perfectly fine. I use, we, we buy the NetGate boxes for all of our businesses, so they have 2.5 gig NICs and they seem to work fine. Our firewall upgrades are at least... Uh, 250 cage time <laughs> and it's with the education 80 percent off uh worth noting two and a half gig intel nicks not two and a half gig real tech nicks don't use real tech why do so many cloud backups can compromise before being caught why can't they detect that terabytes a day is leaving amazon storage and they get billed for it um it's because the way the billing works, they don't bill the moment they see a large egress. Also, um, there's sometimes data egressing all the time based on usage. So it may just look like 
Hey, look, we're a little busier than normal. People are using our service. Hey, look, you know that photo service we have here. Look at the peaks. Suddenly more users are here today. Great. Oh, no, they were exfiltrating things. It's not, it's partly not good monitoring, but it's also um, a little bit challenging sometimes unless you have really good granular uh, control over this to say, hey, look at these egresses. What are they egressing? Constantly be inspecting. It's not an impossible task. It's just not as simple as it's you know baked in. Also, many of the companies that get popped are frequently older companies that didn't think about this, so they didn't engineer it into their original design. So now they have to kind of say, well, how much do we want to spend on retrofitting to have better monitoring and watching for peaks in our egress that seem a little unusual? I know someone in sales at Cisco and. They're open about making about 500 plus K. Yes, that's very true. The salespeople get paid a lot. Tom got excited and kicked the cable. Yes. For sure. Tom, in fairness uh, to the question, at least Palo Alto offers a turnkey solution that's part of the price. PF said to say PSK is being retired. Um, uh, the password one is, I don't think the PSK is though. Uh, I think they're allowing PSK, but not password. Yeah. Real tech Nick should always be, uh, avoided. I tried some third party apps for two factor off from Google. Those, uh, not defeat the purpose of YouTube. I saved the experience. I mentioned Aegis earlier and, uh, Oh, I realize I'm not sharing screens anymore. Aegis is open source and trusted. I'm sure there's a lot of apps out there. Many, I'd imagine if I were a threat actor, I would create an app, you know, uh, and throw it some random app and call it your favorite password manager uh, and, some, and tell you it gives you money or whatever they have to promise and put the words blockchain in it and a bunch of people would buy it and uh then you'd find out it's actually stealing your passwords. At least Aegis is open source and been around for a while. So don't trust any random one out there. Always ask other IT people what's their favorite uh, problem and issue seem complex but end up being simple to fix. Uh, I don't know. Usually when anything's not plugged in. <laughs> not plugged in or um, what else would there be? Oh, there's so many. There's so many. It's usually just not plugged in. Uh, what Nick do you prefer for server builds? Intel or Mellanox or Chelsea? I've had really good luck with the Intel one, so I've been sticking with the Intel for the least amount of problems. Mellanox and Chelsea IO. Um, I think I had a couple Chelsea ones that were a little weird, but they were might have been BSD problems. I was using it in BSD. I swapped them over to Intel and the problem went away. Um, but that could just be a BSD driver. I haven't tried them in Linux. And now that all the ones I have are Intel, I don't really have... I haven't taken the time to test the other ones. I just get Intel because I know they work and are cheap. 10 gig Intel cards are really inexpensive now. Uh, just upgraded my home network UDM Pro, but uh, now I have family... Stat to have control of their network. Any good options inside the unified world? UDM Pro, now the family out of state that I have control of their network. I don't understand the, what you're asking for. Push the power button. I work in the AV, and over the past years, a bunch of IP uh, solutions popped up. The big guys right now are Dante and Do you ever build infrastructure for it? No, I don't really. I don't deal much with the, that type of stuff. How does a Netgate 4100 compare in performance to the low-cost Celeron boxes? I don't know because um, I don't take the time to test them. But, I mean, d d figure out what, you know, go and look up the CPU benchmarks on them because they tell you what processor you're using. Go look at how those processors compare to... Uh, those other boxes. VLANs. Yes, I like VLANs. The the S in VLAN, though, stands for security, in case anyone wasn't sure. I rip out all Netgear switches I come across. I've been used for a year. More to found them uh, to be dropping packets. Um, 
I haven't had that many bad neck gear switches. They generally, I don't think I have any managed neck gear switches though. We've got a handful of people that just have flat networks, simple office, it, not in someone's going to go, but shouldn't you have every office all segmented out? Yeah. If you've got a little four person, four person office, which might be a hair salon, for example, that may have three computers and six or seven people working in a salon, whatever. They have a flat network. I don't think it's a big deal. There's like a neck gear floating around back there. Uh, they just need internet. <laughs> Someone unplugged the uplink of a small network switch hidden inside of a desk. Yeah, finding those network switches in a desk and walls above ceiling tiles. Those are my favorite. You can usually identify the ones above ceiling tiles because you see the telltale sign of the cord running down the wall. You're like, I bet that goes to a switch. If you ever see a cord in, in a, an adapter plug plugged in and it goes up a wall into the ceiling, there's a switch up there. <laughs> just, just assume there's a switch up there because it's a safe bet. <laughs> Play with lots of firewalls in business, lab, and home. There's no easy answer to what's best. This is so true. Uh, have features separate, nice to have features, must have features, and price, and easy to admin. Yeah, there's no perfect one. Oh, if they drop it in the wall, man, you're you're in a whole one. But behind desks, always a popular place. Uh, where, man, one of the weird ones. We had a client. I don't know where he found these. They were they were strange. They're not a, they're not a brand because they don't have any brand on them, but they're metal box ones that reminded me of the way that the edge switches looked like they're a black metal box, but they didn't have any labels on them. They were POE powered switches. And what they had done to create confusion was, and we replaced all their switches. This is how I was digging these things out and finding them. Uh, they put them behind desks. So that way, they could split things. And now they were just dumb switches. No VLAN, no management port, but you POE'd them. And then they had like five other ports and you could plug in other things. And these were stuffed behind desks everywhere. That was unexpected uh, when we were swapping switches. And one of those troubleshooting problems you run into going, why isn't there any working at these desks over here? And you start looking behind the desk after you didn't put a POE switch in because you weren't sure uh, why they had a poe switch because they didn't have anything on that segment of the network that needed poe or so you thought <laughs> regarding interesting it problem machines that were shut down every night turned out to be turned on morning turns out they were running the same power line as the automatic lighting yes we had some of the wi-fi outage like this um the switch not for the room this is great not the switch for the room lights but the switch, there was a room in a lab, the bigger warehouse area of this. The warehouse lighting was tied to the plug we had used for the rack mount. I, they told us to use it. We did. And because we mounted a rack in there because it was like a midpoint in this big warehouse. But it turns out when they turned off the main lights, which they only did on the weekends, um, they would uh, lose that entire rack, would just go dead. And then it would come back on. So you get an alert and turned out the main power of the lights, not the light switch for the room, because that was usually off unless someone was in the room. So that was a weird one to find as well, because they only closed on Saturdays and Sundays. Found a switch under a giant fax machine. Yes. Switch hidden in the ceiling. Wait for the day. Ah. Uh, just spend enough time in tech. You'll find one. Serious U6LR kitchen ceiling had a signal in every room moving it across the closet bedroom. Now our single room has better Wi-Fi. Yes. <laughs> uh, PF set troubleshooting guy need after. I think I have one. I think I, I I feel like I have a PF sense troubleshooting guide. I I know I have. Maybe I don't have it titled that. So I should redo the video. Right, you'll be Ellie. I have an HA proxy troubleshooting. Ah, PF Sense for networking troubleshooting. This is for network troubleshooting. I have that video. So that is a video that exists. I'll throw in here. Well, Unify Flex mini switches. Uh, what do you think about the NUC, well, about the two and a half gig four port NUCs on AliExpress or Amazon? Uh, think about those from Topton. I guess they're okay. I haven't really used them, but they should be, they should be fine. Do we bid on E-rate projects? 
Yes, we do. Uh, of note, the way we do them, there's two different types of E-rate. Talk to our sales guys. They understand it better than I do. I'm the technical guy. Uh, but there's the, uh, I want to say, well, Brett knows. If you ask for Brett, he understands that process. We've done some schools, but there's we have the forms and we know how to help navigate it. So if you're interested in having us do an E-rate project, yes. Talk to us. We can help. Uh, good evening. What model is your favorite PF Sense box for firewall capabilities? All the NetGate boxes. I currently like the 8200. It's a good box. I don't think it's going to be the most cost effective for everybody. Mm. Isn't the lack of uh, recursive permission bit in collections an issue for enterprise? No, because you can you can do that. You can assign, you can build groups and assign permissions granularly in there. So I'm not clear on the question. <clears throat> One gigabit connection runs smooth on a Ryzen 3 Mini running open sense. Cool. Did you test the Unify Mesh Red Bull can? Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about it. I know where it is. It's it's plugged in. And I said, I'm going to test that. So I plugged it in. And then, uh, then, well, there it is. It's plugged in still. I forgot about it. Is anything connected to it? My my phone is connected to it. So there's that. It it works. Um, I've had it plugged in for a while and I kind of just forgot about it again. I gotta get some testing done on this. I, I forget about these, but it works. U6 mesh. If we look at all the things. Actually, we only want the Wi-Fi clients. Most of the Wi-Fi clients are on this. So here's an experiment. What if we... What the, I got a lot of things here. Let's get... How do we get all the things to be on this? These are in proximity to each other. So what we're going to do is go here. And uh, if we reboot this... Is there, can I do it in the settings? Where do they move the reboot button? I don't reboot these very often. Restart. So let's restart the Tom's Basement Wi-Fi. Because if I reboot it, that should force all the people somewhere else. All right. It went offline, which means everyone should be online with this. So we'll see. We'll see if it populates. I think we got to do it like this and it should expand out to all the Wi-Fi things that start coming onto it. Or do I have to refresh the page? I should reboot this one too. Restart. There we go. We're disrupting things. I need a good structure cave installer here in Seattle. How do I pick a good company that won't screw up terminations and leave spaghetti in my attic? I don't know. <laughs> I wish I had a good answer for that. Try to see some of the past jobs they've done. Call them. It's like the vetting process is, uh, is the work. I found APs wired to lights and ceilings. Mesh SSD appear randomly disappear. Yes. Uh, what certifications are available nowadays? Whichever ones places are hiring for. So look at what places are hiring on jobs you're interested in and see what certifications they require. We had two, uh, we had a Netgear switch restarting every two days. If you use a service, found out to save money, loop two ports together through a hub and added. Oh, yes, that's always fun. The Red Bull can works great. What's the deal with Unify calling everything a mesh? I wish they didn't. I can agree with you on that. Uh, did you test Cockpit Houston Core versus TrueNAS Core for NFS iSCSI? No, I have not. That's kind of on my to-do list to do that. They uh, Houston does not have an iSCSI manager. That is true.
even when I worked at Amazon, we got bad cable installers, installed 2,400 drops, and did not test them all. Yeah, that's a thing. Hire me. Yeah, we're not. We we will we go out to Seattle? Yeah, if you're <laughs> you're buying, we're flying. <laughs> uh, I run Pop OS as my daily driver, and it looks like look all the things attached to the can. So everything's back. Everything's on the Red Bull. Nothing's on this. Some things are closer, so I imagine they just decided to be on there. So. There we go. There's the Red Bull can. Look at all those Wi-Fi's. One thing is just picking a cable contractor. Pick a company where they're tech specialized in what they do. Yes. Uh, cable techs and network techs are not the same. They are not the same people at all. That is... Um, one of the problems that a lot of IT people go, hey, I'll take this network technician and go tell them to pull cable. Not the same person. Most of your cable installers are more likely to have a background in the trades and specialize in it. So if they're in construction of some sort, I've even known some people who, you know, they used to be electricians and moved into low voltage cabling. So that's more common. And of course, they have the experience with doing that type of work. I'm having issues with the Unify network layout that you were looking at showing stuff uh, nowhere close to where it is. I don't know. Uh, do you have any experience with Mocha? Consider you trying it. My house does not have any cable ducts, but uh, there's lots of coax. Never tested it, so I don't have any. I, I don't have any suggestion what's good or bad. But I do have a question for everybody. It is 618. How much longer do we want to do this? Because <laughs> I, while I can continue and go further, um, I guess I, I need to take a break, use the restroom, and get a beer. So do I get a beer and continue, or do I uh, stop it here? I can let the audience decide, like, six more hours? Like, I, I and here's another question. While I run upstairs and grab a beer <laughs> and go pee, where, where what do I do with the live stream? <laughs> I'm not taking it with me to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, let's see. Go get a beer, get a beer, and continue. All right, voting's in. <laughs> YOLO. What happened to my eye? Oh, that's you know what? Let's see if we can zoom in. Ah. Uh. I got a little sty in my eye. There, that's what you guys wanted to see, right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Get a beer and continue. All right, the votes have it. So get a beer and continue is what I'll do. Um, What can I put on to entertain? There we go. So that's what happened to my eye. We've answered that. Can I upload a video? I think I can. This is actually going to be fun. Present a video file. I did a video. It's it's going to be a shorts video. I just got to click publish on my channel, but I'll share it here. Uh, aw. H265 not supported. Play some jazz while I get a beer. You know, is there a way I can do that through here? How does that work? I can actually do that. So we're going to do that. I can actually, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Play some jazz while you're beer. Yes, I will. I will set a countdown. And it'll be a 30 second countdown. So there's that. So we're going to set the countdown. I'll grab a beer and then we will continue. I think you can do this in 30 seconds. I, I don't got far to go.
Well, that was more than 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, five, four, three. Yeah, I think I missed it. Mm. Quick hacking his system while he's away. Yes. Soft toys nailed to the wall. Yes. Actually. Why do I have this? What is this? Who recognizes what this is and why this would be on Tom's wall? Come on, someone throw the answer in here. I have AT&T router set to DMZ plus mode. It's connected. <laughs> oh, I see someone guessed it. <laughs> Uh, DMZ mode is connected to my PFSense box. PFSense gets a public IP, uh, but I'm able to access outside my network. How do I block external access for your router set gets DMZ mode and is connected to PFSense lab box. PFSense gets a public IP, but I'm able to access it, the outside network. How do I block external? You want to block PFSense? Then you can just uh, block the... Um, your by default PFSense doesn't have the web port open, so I'm not really sure how you got that configured. Open SUSE, SUSE, Linux characters. Oh, did you guys see the other one and know why I have that one on there? Ugh. And where did this come from? <laughs> Uh, let's see here. I heard noises, but I don't know where it is. They, uh, GNU, yes. So I had uh, GNU with this, and I have a blue, uh, a blue SUSE Linux, and the other one's a green one, SUSE Linux. So and the GN GNU Emacs, yes. So that's why those are there, which. I got to figure out how to balance them because I did have this. You try to hook them like this together. And they can kind of, well, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> uh, where do you get that swag? Where do you get that swag? Oh, man, I get um, all this. You know, hey, let's let's do this. I have more swag in here. But I have a camera that's not facing in a way that makes slack, swag easy to see. I think this works. Let's find out. Oh, the wall, the wall panels. Yeah, I have a whole studio tour video. Mm, pull this up. I'm what I'm gonna do is I think, I think that this works for my phone by doing this. Yeah, trade show swag. Only reason to go. Um, there we go. I think you can turn this way. Let's go turn it down. There we go, and we'll. There's more things. There's some of the other swag. Ah, oh, is there an echo? <clears throat> I don't know how to stop the echo. How about this? Does it stop the echo? Oh, the sound's awful. That's not good at all. But conferences, that's where all this comes from. That's from Linode. And that's the stuff behind the wall. Einstein.
How about now? Is it working? <laughs> You're on mute. Is this, is, I think it's. I think I fixed it. It looks like it's working. How? All right, cool. I see people saying yay. There you go. I hit mute on the microphone itself. So audio is back. Now turn your mic back on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, your microphone has been fixed. So what's the dumbest tech problem? You guys just watched Tom mute himself. <laughs> Uh, the tool I use for all this is called StreamYard. Uh, that's how I do my live streams. That's how all these comments are coming up like this. Uh, let's see. I have a full tour of my studio you can find on my channel. I did it maybe a week or two ago. Looking to implement PFSense router firewall in my home. What is the best configuration in conjunction with my AT&T gateway to have set up? I love to bypass the gateway as much as I can. You want a gateway, and I, I don't, I'm not an expert in AT&T gateways. I don't see them as often anymore. But the goal is to find out how to get your gateway in bridge mode. Once it's in bridge mode, you're handing off the service to bridge it over to your PF Sense, where it will have the public IP address and make your life better. So in short, Bitwarden exposed on subdomain or Bitwarden via tail scale. What about accessing via untrusted devices? Um, I have ours set up with a reverse proxy. So however you want to access that reverse proxy, VPN of some sort, Tailscale is a sort of VPN. So you have to kind of decide that part yourself. Tailscale is fine. Whatever methodology you want to use to get to your instance. At least you weren't recording a video on mute. Oh, not today at least. I've certainly done that, so... Uh, what's the latest with the next version of Pop OS? I don't know. I think Jay did a review of it. I don't, I just update it when the new versions come out. DMZ plus or bridge mode for at t modems, they both suck. <clears throat> Probably. Uh, didn't at t lose a lawsuit about not letting users have their own equipment? Bit of phone history time for you. Not the first time uh, that that's happened. Did you know? Much like the routers, where the companies want you to use their equipment, that's not new. Phone companies used to make you, this is why phones were so homogenized before, why they were all the same for so long. You had to get the phone from the telephone company. It was not an option to use a third-party phone. You used their phone they provided for a fee. So it's kind of interesting um, that history is kind of repeating itself when it comes to that. Yeah, recording on mute is just a practice round. If you don't have bridge mode for whatever reason, uh, double NAT is not ideal, but still better than nothing. I would say that, yeah. If it's the only option you have, it is what it is. Uh, what else were we going to talk about today? You know, because I ran down my list, so I'm really just doing Q&A here, folks. Uh, this, is, this is all completely led by all of you. Um, I just want to see how I publish a video. <laughs> so I think this video needs to be published now. I can show you what I do in the back end. <laughs> the beer oh, was muted when I had the beer up there. Good point. We can't let the uh, the dirty bastard. Founders, Dirty Bastard, Scotch Ale. So, Scotch Ale. Uh, installing XCPNG in an older Xeon, DD or ISO mode? ISO. Here in Jamaica, the main ISP forces us to use Aris modems. Yeah. Uh, is it out of beta? I haven't tested any of the beta ones right now. I'm just waiting for them to get to the 3.0 release. Can you touch on the last pass breach? I uh, covered that in my, um, video covering the last pass breach. I last pass is a massive target. I would not want to be their security people. Um, no, no matter how good of a job it's hard. 
because they're the biggest player in the password management game. Therefore, they have the biggest target painted on their backs. Um, it's not easy running security for a company at that scale. End of story. Um, that being said, I don't really know enough details to tell you if what they did was you know, good enough. Obviously, it wasn't because someone got in, but how you know, at what point due to the complexity of things is good enough. It's a really fuzzy point to, to decide if you want to be honest. Um, but them not encrypting the URLs, that's something they've known about for a long time. And I did mention that in my video where that's how people got some of that information is because that information was left unencrypted. So I, I, it's going to, we just want to know how complicated the attack is because that is kind of a judgment. You also you know, you got to be careful. You, people are quick to jump and dogpile on stuff. Um, but I've reminded people, it, it shouldn't be shame on you. You got hacked all the time. It's kind of like saying, oh, someone has broken your house. Well, you didn't have a bank vault protecting your house. I mean, come on. So figuring out where that adequate level of security is. And then what if you find out that it was insider threat or something like that? You know, this came down to the Ubiquity case where they Ubiquity had an insider that was doing it. So now when you have someone who not as just an insider as an employee, but a high level employee, now you have a really complicated situation where the high level employee was doing extortion. We don't know that this is the case in any measurable way in the last past incident. But what if it was? We we don't have all the details. The full debrief isn't done. So there's a lot to think about in there. Uh, OS 2.x is EA currently been withdrawn. Whoops. So apparently that broke. I wish I could just fiber right to the UDM Pro. Yes. They should not leave the URLs in plain text. I agree. As someone uh, took my one employee left, someone took an employee laptop, maybe. Well, they got in. And they got access to some, an employee to get certain credentials. So PFSense, OpenSense, DHCP uh, to disable IPv6 go IPv4, not too well versed in that part. Just turn off IPv6. You can turn it off. It's not hard. You can just disable it. Mac doing giveaways, not just on Sundays. Uh, I don't know what that means. Monday morning quarterbacks, lots of them. <laughs> Isn't that the fun though? I mean, come on. The, tell me there's not some, you know, overweight person sitting in a, a chair screaming how they could have run that ball down the field better, having not probably run in a number of years. You know, I'm, I'm just saying it, it is sometimes how it ends up looking. So. <laughs> Like the connectwise where you need root access. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep my own. Uh, I keep my own stuff on my own stuff. It's more secure. It's not worth the effort for my little stuff. To some extent, security through obscurity does work. Well, it's less about security through obscurity. Sometimes it's security because no one's interested in you. I don't know. If, I'm not saying that is the case. I'm just saying sometimes that's you know where you get lucky, where people are less interested in you. Um, it's a thing. Are there any pros and cons of disabling IPv6? Pro, you don't need it. Con, you don't need it. I don't know. There's not really, I don't use, I disable it. I don't have any problems, uh, but I don't use anything IPv6. So I have no idea because I don't do anything IPv6. I, I do something IPv6. I go and disable it. That's actually my process. <laughs> Why does unlimited data from Comcast cost 30, but X5 with Comcast Mono below data for 20 bogus? Comes down to how they want to price it. Do you have any new ideas on Zen Orchestra 6? Um, it's pro it's going to roll out in, a, in an interesting way. I believe they talked about this in one of their live streams. They're going to have it so you'll be able to beta test 6. It'll install with your 5. You'll be able to add like a slash 6, so whatever the naming convention will be. But you'll be able to test drive it. 
And if you have problems with it or, you know, it's beta and there's bugs, you can roll back to five by not actually rolling back, but by having them simultaneously exist in the same install. So I think they have a good way forward, but I don't really have any release date information on there for when they plan on starting to roll the rollout of it. On the plus side, LastPass might be able to weakest link for a while. They're probably investing a lot of effort into hardening at the moment. Yes, uh, everyone's budget is so much better after a breach. Cons, it breaks sometimes. You know, Microsoft lapses, lapses really, uh, you know, got into some big companies in 2022. I, I might, I thought about doing a video where you just kind of discussed it because there's a couple interesting things about lapses. First, they didn't use malware to do what they did. Lapses breached, Microsoft, lapses breached, uh, Rockstar Games, ra lapses breached, Uber. They did all three of those massive companies without malware. They did MFA fatigue. They were able to get deep into those networks. Oh, Okta too. So we got four massive publicly traded. I believe all of them are publicly traded. Well, uh, yeah, I think Rockstar Games is. Anyways, four huge companies that got broken into by one team that didn't use malware. But they did use MFA fatigue and different techniques because these companies were either relying on text messages and other ways to bypass it and they hijack phones because no one thought anyone would put the effort it takes to hijack someone's phone number to get a text message resent there. Now that they know the effort is there, that people are willing to do it, willing to go that level to get that. Um, it's making these companies reconsider how they do things. Once again, it, it was like too inconvenient before, but once someone got in, they go, well, I guess we need to do that. I guess we need to address that issue. So uh, it, it's one of those, everything uh, after the fact is, is really interesting after a breach when they go, all right, we know what's possible. Someone proved it. Um, this is why for so long, Mac was getting attacked. Uh, they were not in a fortune 500 companies. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you had less viruses on Mac because if you're going to take the time to attack someone, you want to get the, you know, from an attacker's perspective, what's the cost benefit? I have to put this much effort. How much can I get? And that's where they find the balance. Uh, Zen dead? No, not at all. Zen is extremely actively developed, going very well. Sorry, I was trying to play with VM, but how do I keep one VM from infecting a server if it gets a virus? Um, it Lateral movement is blocked by not having the VMs talk to each other is one way to describe it. Um, is there a way they can laterally move between them? It depends on what virus, and there's a lot of other things. Lateral movement through connected systems, for example, a Microsoft domain controller with all the other systems joined at that domain is a big attack vector uh, that can absolutely lead to owning everything. I'm actually a big fan of IPv6. Uh, cool. Yeah, I don't know anyway. I, I, people seem to be a big fan of IPv6, but commercially, we don't really run into it. Um, so the only thing that I'm aware of that they goof up on is the URL. Um, that being said, I, I don't really understand whether or not people's passwords were like, it, it, if you have a good master password, my understanding from reading the breach details is as long as you had a good master password, that would mean outside of the URLs and obviously your email address, which they would have. And those are two good pieces of information of to fish someone is take the URLs they go to. Hey, look at you going to this website. Send that person an email going, hey, uh, would you log into this website? But outside of that, if you're using a good master password, the database itself should be well protected. If your uh, master password was, I like going to Florida, you have a problem. <laughs> you know, if you have a uh, a phrase you use that is a common dictionary phrase, a common grouping of dictionary words, because, you know, the length, I mean, maybe there's a word long enough that you could have one word be that, but uh, yeah, that would be bad.
I hate Okta wanted employees connect to our phones because they refused to use 2FA email or text said we needed to an app. Yes. Silly question. You know, when you connect to WAN, you can see ISP's name. Is there a way you can do it with a custom name and personal network or just a name? Are you talking about the reverse DNS entry? The ISPs often do have reverse DNSs that will give the IP address. Um, if you're talking about reverse DNS lookup, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. MS Authenticator has first level defense against MFA fatigue by showing geolocation and app. Yes. Thank you for all the videos on Bitwarden. I've been a paid user going on three years and love it. Awesome. I was thinking the same with IPVX. Turn it off. Turn it off. It is. Any idea on the Windows 11 Bitwarden client failing to connect to our self hosted web and Android works fine? No, I can't think of any reason why, but make sure you have a good valid certificate. Valid certificate is huge. We have user window login creds for almost all of our accounts. Is there a reason for forward secrecy? Maybe in a few years, password DB can be easily broken, but sadly, there is no forward secrecy for DBs. Twenty-six letters, numbers, and special signs. You are doing good, my friend. That is good. Hope that will be fine. But change most of my passwords, even upgrading the length, removing duplicates. I hope you, yeah, don't have duplicate passwords. That's always a bad idea. There are two types of IPv6 users: one that uses it, and the rest of the world. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Um, what was I sharing? Any idea of the PF Sense 2.7 release? Hey, there's something we can all do. Who wants to? Um, I should publish this video. Here, this is how I publish videos. This is why I, I forgot to set it as a timer. But here we go. Save. All right, that video is published. But let's go in here. And log into this. Let's get this upgraded. Let's try PFSense 2.7. We're currently on, um, make this bigger, 2205. So we're going to switch this to the newest version. I got a lot of windows open. So let me do this. We'll switch it here. It's our lab system. Let's see if we can upgrade it. Thank you very much. It's much appreciated. Uh, perhaps do a video in the future where you migrate your office to IPv6 and show the pitfalls and gotchas. We're not upgrading IPv6. That is a future that I don't know when it will happen. But let's try and do this. There was a bug that stopped this from working. So let's see if that bug has been fixed. I, I It's been posted in the forums. So current base is 2205, and we're going to 23, which is the 2.7. This is where it would time out and get an error that there was another process running. And I don't know what the fix is for that. I may have to restart it because um, let me find the NetGate forum post. Unless it's working. No, now my browser is getting stuck. I have a lot. Maybe there's too many windows open. There's a lot of windows open. There we go. Is it still live? It says I'm live streaming. All right, there we go. Uh, I 
What locked up? Did the browser lock up? I can't tell. There we go. All right, I'm still live. I did close a bunch of tabs, and I don't really know why. They, some some are working, some are not. Let's see if there's a response to the problem. Any word on a fix? Not committed yet. This is... Uh, I guess it was more involved to do it right. Let me see. Any, any word fixed yet? Unable to tomorrow. Post those any changes out there. So expecting this. All right. So the upgrade system update failed. Yes. This is that forum post is the bug we're getting. But don't worry, folks. We can still test. Uh, PF Sense uh, froze up killing connection behind it, meaning you can't get to the PF Sense site to read documentation. <laughs> hmm. This is a lab server. So. Let's go ahead and switch back to the lab. And we'll we're going to stop this one. Alt this PF sense. I already have another one here called PF sense 2.6 2.7 development. So we'll start this one. This one's still thinking about shutting down. Come on. There we go. And now this one's starting up. So, and we'll update this one to be the latest again. Um, I think you can do pair virtualization. I don't use it. Uh, yeah, hardware virtualization with pair virtual enabled. So, yes, the answer to that would be yes. All right, let's see. Is this one ready? It's getting close, it's booting. No IPs yet. We got to wait for the IPs to get assigned. PFSense Plus has ZFS boot environments via GUI. Can this be in a CLI? In theory, it has capability in hood, right? I've never tried it, but probably. It probably does. I mean, if you're using PFSense Plus, just use it through the UI because it's easier. 3.231. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Two, three, one. We should probably do a snapshot of it real quick. All right. Now let's update it to the latest version. This is already on 2.7. Um, but we're going to update it to the absolute latest instance of it. So let's go ahead and see if it will update to the latest version. Is there a reason a home user running their own hardware would shift away from CE over to Plus? You know, it's got a couple extra things in it. The ZFS boot environments are pretty cool. So I, I think those are nice. Um, and they have a free home lab thing, so... ZFS root and Proxmox, uh, the Proxmox boot tool. Uh, it's great for making sure you can boot from a either a disk or a mirror. How does XCB handle that? I, uh, you can set up mirror drives for your uh, boot install of XCPNG. It has just standard RAID mirroring. 
So I, I don't know if that's the answers the question you have or not. But you can do a rated uh, mirror. Oh, cool. It, it, it's updating. Yay. It's downloading it. The other reason I want to update now is because PFSense tells me that, I, that uh, there's a new 2.05 version, although it is on 22.05. Huh. Not sure. Any new hardware coming up from Ubiquity? You know, I haven't seen anything new from them hardware-wise that got me really excited. Um, you know, I don't keep up with their latest stuff. People get real excited asking questions about Wi-Fi 6, uh, but it's not its not really that big of a deal to me. So it's, you know, I, I don't... I don't run out and buy all the latest stuff on there, but if people want to ask about it. It's mostly home users, I guess. And if I was buying something today, it makes sense to go with that. Um, but I don't swap hardware that much myself. But I want to do uh, some updated videos on the Ubiquity lineup. And biggest reason why is because the... Um, the ubiquity lineup has changed a lot and it's now back in stock because a lot of times we bought what was in stock, not necessarily what you wanted because the customer wanted the project done. You can either not do the project or you can substitute with whatever product was in stock. <laughs> Edge Max is dead. Yeah, I think they've killed off some of those products. And of course, Ubiquity's had those weird videos where they're talking about adding new things. Um, they're always, you know, kind of like reaching out going, we're going to get into charging cars or something silly. I think they have a release and I forget what they called it. Um, they're weird new box that's supposed to mount to a wall. Like they just have weird ideas that they seem to have their flights of fancy on. I don't know. Um, I guess they're trying new things. Their core business is very profitable, selling switches and Wi-Fi and probably a handful of those unified dream machines. So they take that money and invent new ideas. Um, I don't know. It's their prerogative to do so. Weird new prototypes. Yes. No doubt. That's a good way to describe it. Just straight up weird new prototypes. Oh, it looks like it's booting. Cleaning package case done. So I think we have success. We updated live and it didn't explode. So share this tab. Let's see if it logs in. Hey, look at this. We're in. And we're running FreeBSD 14. Yay. We're completely up to date as of Thursday, December 29th. What are the versions of the packages? PF Blocker. Ooh. New version of PF Blocker in here. Because 3.10 is newer than the one that's in there. So that's new. Is NTOP the same? Let me pull up another window. And top the same version, I'm wondering. Package manager. So end top is You're not installed in this one? No, hold on. There it is. 813.10. 813.10. So that's not new. But the PF blocker is the one the 15 version. So that's interesting. Uh, dream wall, dream wall. There's the one. Yeah. Who knows it'll come out. <laughs> Cody's got one collecting dust. <laughs> At least they keep things interesting. Yes. Yeah. The, um, will PF blocker ever come out of development? No, probably not. I think they I think once they expire the old one and remove it from the packages, uh they'll do it because I don't know why they can't just rename it PF Blocker 2, but I think there's some problems with the way 
they handle the packages of, they can't change the name of an existing package. I don't know if there's any new packages in here. I think they're all the same. Yeah, all this looks pretty the same in here. Nothing, nothing new and exciting. At least I don't think so. In XOA, is it possible to create a VM without a template? Uh, yes. No, actually, you know, you do need to start with a template, but it doesn't matter. The template doesn't have to match the VM exactly. So you can use a template that's like a Linux template for a distro that's not in there. So the template doesn't have to match exactly. So it's not that you can create it without a template, but you don't have to have a template that matches what you're doing. Do you have a have the YouTuber special on pre-release? <laughs> you bought it when it was in EA. I don't think you in in you don't. It's up to you if you want to answer this, Cody. Um, does Ubiquity send you stuff anymore? They don't. They quit sending me stuff. Um, so that's uh, they used to send me things. I I buy everything now. Watching via the Dream Wall now. Interesting. Is there an easy way to generate a new password for Radius if a user can't ping the device? Um, generate a new password if a user can't ping the device. I don't... Being disconnected from a PoE doorbell. I don't even understand that collection of words. I don't know what you're trying to do. I don't know what a doorbell has to do with a Radius password and pinging. Yeah, they sent me stuff a long time ago and then just stopped sending me stuff. Um, and it's not always sponsorships. So some things aren't necessarily, I always just close if someone sent me something like Cisco sent me the switch, but that's not a sponsor. That's not the same as sponsoring something because uh, occasionally like a company may send me a demo, but the rules I have are very, very clear. The rules and this goes uh, for netgate as well netgate sent me before it was available the 8200 the rules of engagement if you will how i will do the review and i outline this i have a content ethics policy they can send me stuff because hey they want me to look at it or talk to them about it matter of fact they often will reach out to me and say, hey, Tom, did you have any problems with it? Blah, blah, blah. And, and this is just me being honest with them. If I run into something that I don't like about the product or I have some opinions on it before it's released, they may use that feedback uh, ahead of time. But what they don't get to do is once I know it is the or I have the software that will be running on the device when it's shipped and I'm doing it on par at that point, that review does not get reviewed by them before I release it to you. I have my opinions. I put my opinions on these devices and we go from there. Now, most of the time I'm buying hardware, but you know, for example, the 8200, you can't buy it. It's not, well, you can, you can pre-order it, but they sent it to me a little while ago and I put it right into production so I can do a longer term test and give people an honest review of it based on what it's like using it under load. So that's how I do my reviews on, on some occasions where hardware was given to me. But I'm always honest, it was given to me. But given to me is not the same as buying a review. Um, you know, if someone wanted to buy a sponsored post, I charge a lot more um, than the price of a, you know, whatever a device might cost that they send me. So, and I'm always clear. I, I like, for example, um, one of the sponsored reviews I do was a company called Sasleo. That is a sponsored video. That video was paid for by specifically John at Sasleo to do that review of their product. Uh, and it's it, it's it, it's a product demo, paid for product demo. And it's absolutely the first thing I say when I start the video, this video is paid for by Sasleo. This is a product demo with me and John from Sasleo. So I'm always implicitly clear on that. But you're right. Some YouTubers are not. And that's unfortunate. Hmm. I have multiple remote properties that I thought the dream walls would be good because they run off a generator and solar, but I was hoping uh, they'd have add UNI access. Yeah. Uh, 
Idea being, could you extract the password from a crappy PoE DRO and connect it to the cable to VLAN? I'd like a radius server to change the password if I can't ping it. I have no idea how you have your radius server talking to a doorbell. So I have no idea. I love IPA beer. Use the doorbell. I mean, you could probably write something code wise to say when this doorbell does a thing, change something in radius. But I don't know anything natively built into the radius. There's nothing in there about that. So. Whenever I get something in the MPI cycle, new product introduction, I'm not allowed to talk about it on social media and have everything uh, past marketing. Yeah, past marketing for weeks after GA. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't tell people I had um, the NetGate device until, like, I had it before I could tell people about it. I had to wait till NetGate, uh, you know, was... Um, allowing me to say it. So, I mean, those, those are general agreements. That's not anything about the review. It's just like, Hey, um, don't talk about it until after this date. Those are the way those agreements work. Should I dump last pass? I say, yes, use Bitwarden. Uh, even if you use Bitwarden system itself, it, it works well. I mean, I have no idea why, You'd want to have your doorbell reset radius passwords, but go for it. It sounds interesting. If it's interesting to you, run with it. Some people make a big deal about YouTubers getting tech because they don't get and uh, build a business like, uh, because they don't get it and build and can't build a business like you and Cody. Yeah. Who owns Bitwarden? That's actually an interesting question. And I have an answer. <laughs> so. Uh, the company that owns it is called um, Share This Tab instead. I'll just share this link. It's in here somewhere. They they got a name. It's like eight bit something. There's their their own. They're kind of a, their their own company, but the way the contracts work, it's they got another name behind the scenes, but they're open source and um, well vetted as a company. So they're good. <laughs> Embargoes. Thoughts on RoboForms. Never used it. I don't have an interest in using it. So I don't know if it's good or bad. Um, any opinion one password? You know, interestingly, kind of. And I'll pull this up. And I, I've not used one password at all. Uh, I prefer Bitwarden. So definitely... Um, you know, that's my preference, but if we pull up to uh, a post by, here we go, share this tab instead. Uh, that's interesting. There we go. So this is uh, Jer Jeremiah M. Gosney, and I will throw a link to this post. He says he knows the people at 1Password and says they do a good job. Now, why am I pulling up some random person you may not heard of? Well, let's just say, Jeremy, um, he is a pretty good cryptographer, so has a pretty good set of credentials. So he's, one, this post I shared, and I shared this on my LinkedIn and uh, a few other places, kind of talks about some of the problems of LastPass. It's a lot of details in here. Uh, but he does say, both Bitwarden and 1Password are places he thinks. Uh, he recommends Bitwarden and 1Password. I don't have any any feelings towards 1Password. I never used it, so I don't know anything good or bad. Um, but, hey, you know, that's up to you. My partial, I'm partial to Bitwarden because I've used it for the last couple of years. I have used Bitwarden for almost a year now, never considered self-hosting. Yeah, even if you don't self-host, I think Bitwarden's solid. Years ago, I was literally important because they only had one developer. I, they've had a team of developers for a while. They're, they got a, quite a few people working there. Oh, you've heard Cody. Cody from Mac Telcom Networks, which is, that's Cody. Um, he's got a YouTube channel, great YouTube channel. You should subscribe to it. I'm building my own servers and I can't wait to have it ready to install Bitwarden on it. I think it's fun learning how to host the projects. 
<clears throat> on-prem hosted or cloud you know it it really comes down to whether or not you are good at hosting things yourself if it's a project you even want to take on um i it, it's not a decision you should take on lightly because I talk about in my video of how to self-host it, some of the prerequisites. And if you're not familiar with setting up those prerequisites and you're not familiar with maintaining and updating servers, well, that can be a little bit of a problem. And, but I have no problem. Like all my personal stuff is hosted in Bitwarden, not on my server, like in their servers, my business, I host in the Bitwarden one. And it's because I have a bunch of stuff I already host. So I'm throwing it in the pile of things I host. So I, that comes up to whether or not you're, you want to do that part or not. You have uh, one password and Bitwarden. You prefer Bitwarden because you think it's more friendly. Fair enough. Why in the world are doorbell resetting radius passwords? Those words make no sense. Oh, good. You're not the only one. I, I, I thought I had had too much beer when I seen that. I'm just saying. 8021X is in a home environment. I don't think so. Um, I don't know. It's low on my priority list to do a whole breakdown video on that. We use cloud behind SSO integrated with SCM. It's almost set and forget it. What Tom said, you don't need more work hosting. That's sometimes what it comes down to. Do you need to spend the time hosting something? Uh, sometimes yes, but sometimes it's not as good. By the way, great Q&A. IT folks here have a deal with a password manager issue. If you get back to work next week, many questions coming from end users. Oh, yes, for sure. You know, this is one of those things where the um, end user stuff, the end users are seeing something in the news that's technical, which doesn't always mean... IT people are going to have a good time because they they learn just enough to ask you more questions. And you're like, I didn't want to talk to you sometimes. <laughs> you're like, I don't want to answer a lot of questions about Bitwarden uh, or password management, you know, talking to the end users. But I don't know. It is what it is. 802.1x doesn't make a lot of sense unless you have dynamic VLANs to play with. Yeah. And it's there's some challenges in setting it all up. He said, reset the password only when he could not ping the doorbell or protect network is an odd, but people like to play with what they can do. Yes. I love when my topics get above the fold or <laughs> old school newspaper. <laughs> Hi, Tom from Australia, the land down under. Don't let a good tragedy go to waste. If you can up people's security, please always take the time to do so. Anytime we can, as technical people, help the less technical among us raise the bar for security, I think we're doing really well. <laughs> if you overcomplicate your home network, you end up frustrated family members, even things like separate SSIDs start to trip them up. Yeah, don't give them other things to connect to. Had to discuss the last patch of management after they read some articles online. That was fun. Hey, it's a good opportunity to engage with them. Like I said, it's not all bad. Um, tech, a lot of technical people can be a bit less talkative. But yeah, I, I mean, hey, take the opportunity because they're going to talk about something that you have knowledge on. And they are valuing your expertise. So <laughs> what's your opinion on security with self-hosting Bitwarden and using Nginx proxy manager to access over the internet? The problem comes down to, and I said this earlier too, if you are going to self-host and expose it to the internet, the problem is you're, you're making a bet. Who's faster? Well, you get two, you got a couple factors going on here. Who's better at patching things. Let's say there's a flaw. Well, there's not one now that I'm aware of, but let's say there's a flaw. Who's going to patch that flaw faster? You or Bitwarden? That's the question. You're, it's a game. Second part, if there's a flaw found at Bitwarden, who do they attack first? You or Bitwarden? Now, Shodan's made this easier. So, you know, people uh, in QNAP is an easy example of this. QNAP has a flaw. People scripted probably the 
database of Shodan and grabbed all the QNAPs and they keep them in a list. And when QNAP has another flaw, they go and extort users from it. So do you end up in a Shodan list or some similar site list where if there's a flaw, they access this database of flaws and go, hey, look, we can go get this person's passwords. I don't know. So it's all things to think about. Have you done hotel captive Wi-Fi? If so, the integration loyalty room number reservation radius. Um, I recommend buying third-party software for it. You can do this in PF Sense, um, but I'm going to recommend there's companies out there that actually offer that as a service, and uh, that would be the better way to go. So that way you're not trying to deal with, you know, either a Unify or PF Sense implementation of it. I mean, if you're using some of the other firewalls, they may have a better one, but there's software out there that's like designed for captive portal room number. Uh, type authentication. Started a new job in IT in Michigan back in August. They talked about Bitwarden, but I finally got them to deploy it. So I have somewhere secure to look up my passwords. Awesome. That's congratulations there. TV media or similar call you for an interview? No, I'm not famous like that. Well, we thought LastPass was good at patching. Well, we don't really know how they got into their servers. So it's not that they found a flaw in their LastPass itself. They found a way into their back end, how they do their development. They attacked one of their developers. That was their target. So, yeah. Favorite Bluetooth speaker? I don't really use Bluetooth speakers, so I don't know. I do like... Though I don't use the speakers, but I have these. These are those uh, Aftershock. These are great. I like these as a Bluetooth. If you're talking about Bluetooth headset, then this is the winner. And by the way, my beer is almost empty, so I'm going to wind this down. I got hair stuck to this. There. <laughs> uh, I communicate with simple words. We'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Uh, make some captive portal software I've had success with, with small hotels. There, there's a few different companies out there that make software designed for that. Uh, I did not watch his, Chris's portable captive. Um, I think well, he was doing it with Ubiquity, I think. Devices on my net are showing sometimes with self-assigned, sometimes DCP or both. Any ideas what's wrong? Router switch range extenders if they're not getting a dhcp are the ones that are attaching to the range extenders the ones not getting it which ones aren't getting it start that as a troubleshooting point you know if the range extenders are not working well or causing timeouts that can cause the problem of the devices downstream not getting the address because they request a dhcp that the process is you have this Hey, I'm a new device on a network. And you send out this, you know, broadcast saying, I'm new. Where can I find an IP address? And then the server responds. But if you have things that are causing too much latency or dropping some of the packets, they may drop that request packet, the DHCP request, and not get the proper response because, well, the system never heard it to hand out their IP addresses. So that's hopefully... Uh, helpful. Uh, post in my forums some of the details of your network. The forums I spend a lot of time in, um, you know, offering people advice and helping people uh, troubleshoot networking problems. There's a good. There's a lot of people that have joined my forums. They're good at that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love that people have recognized. <laughs> They have recognized the Gavin Belson of of uh, my network. We're going to pull this up here. Oh, man, why is it? No. So, let's, I hate when YouTube does this. Where's my Where's my URL for my video? Stupid YouTube. Uh, go to my channel. I'm going to pull up the video I just did. If YouTube will let me. 
There we go. Getting a link to this is not as easy as it should be. Anyway, sorry, I got distracted here. Um, real quick here, is there an easy way in PF Sense to see the different countries where land traffic is going? Uh, NTOP PNG is probably the easiest because it has some, G if you load GOIP information into your NTOP, you can do that. Let's see if we can pull it up in real time. Uh, let's see. Let's pull up the so diagnostics. You can tell Tom's getting tired, right? Geo map. There we go. Share this tab. In NTOP, you can do this. You can pull geo maps for IP addresses. There's an IP address in Chicago I'm connected to. A few in Dallas, apparently. Oh no, Washington. They're spying on me. That's actually kind of cool. That's an interesting. It's it's W. This is how I'm accessing Debian. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, get rid of the Wi-Fi ex uh, range extenders. Yeah. Can you do a video on configuring PFSense with a separate layer three switch or dedicated router doing routing of PFSense as the firewall? I don't understand exactly. I mean, that's just a, that's just a video about doing layer three, whatever layer three switch I choose. If big companies, if big cloud companies are getting hacked, uh, what chance we stand? I guess we're less of a target. Um, don't underestimate an aptitude. Um, just because they're a big cloud company doesn't mean they didn't leave an open bucket somewhere. So it's not like this is just, oh, if Microsoft can't be protected, you can't. Um, granted, Microsoft obviously has the resources, but Microsoft also was using text message authentication and which led to them getting attacked. Why have I so many of these IPs here? Weird. This must be where StreamYard is. <laughs> where is this exactly? I have no idea. There's where all those IPs are GOIP located. That's interesting. Boom. So, ooh, I'm talking to Boston. I don't know what that IP does in Boston, but there it is. <laughs> uh, Tor nodes. Um, actually, do I have any Tor nodes pulled up? Probably. Let's see here. Where are those at? Uh, not really. I thought I had more. Oh, there we go. There's a bunch of them. Let's see if I can map these. There. You know, I have to uh, see. We're going to share this real quick. So if we present, share screen, Chrome tab. You want to see the Tor nodes? They go everywhere. You know, I have to make sure I'm properly uh, seeding things over my, you know, uh, well, they're not Tor, actually not all torrenting nodes, I should say. Geo, oh, geo data is off a lot, by the way. Have you dealt with the DDoS to elaborate steps to remediate? Uh, step one, put up Cloudflare. Step two, pay the bill that comes with remediating. I don't have a better answer. The answer is yes. The answer is Cloudflare, Akamai, 
Um, you need a CDN in front of you. If you have something getting DDoSed, stick a CDN in front of it. Any nodes in China? Hmm. Are there? Probably not. Close. Where's this at? I'm bad at geography. I don't know where those are. I know where they're at. Oh, Korea. That's Korea. Oh, look, someone up here. Canada. Is that Cody? Am I seeding some some uh, torn files for Cody? <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Working on a small office ever. Uh, for network infrastructure using Proxbox with VMs for PFSense, Docker containers, PXE, NetBox, free PAP for authentication. Awesome. You know, the problem with DDoSing is the fact that it's, um, it's not, it's not easy to defend against. And the reason it's not easy to defend against is because it it's, too many packets going to one place. This is generally how a lot of the DDoSs work. So how do you defend against it? Well, they fill up the pipe that you have. You have to have a bigger pipe. Who's going to have a bigger pipe? Large uh, content delivery networks like Cloudflare, Akamai. They're going to be able to absorb that attack. And, yeah, you know, it's just a, it's just a who's got the uh, 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 the bigger guns. It's a weapons war. You know who can who can absorb this much data. So that's the unfortunately part about D DDoS attacks. Uh, Jeff Gearling has some good videos on it. Um, there's only so much you can do because if it's kind of like saying like you have a phone number and that phone number has routing in it. Like say I have you know a handful of employees, so you call my number and then you call. The different people. Well, the old version of DDoS is when you call that number to the point where you can't answer the phone anymore. You've now done a denial of service on the phones. Same problem. How do you solve it? You can get more people to answer the phones. You can start blocking numbers, but if it keeps coming from different numbers, well, that's really hard to block. And you can see how this is just being a problem. How do you know you're being DDoS in the first place? Not like it happens every day. I'm looking for other things first. Um, you usually watch the web thing, it's usually a web thing, generally, um, and you'll watch the hits go up and up and up and just keep getting higher and higher until they're un you can't reply to them anymore. So that's usually how. Sponsor some of the DOS attacks to currently encourage meeting companies to buy their services. That's not true. I don't believe it's true, but hey. Uh, did you say the Unified Router is amazing? You just see my, did did I tell you that the Unify routers are amazing? My UDM SE is only able to do PPA at uh, three, one half gig. Uh, with, with my cheap IC router, Nat, you always have eight gig. Yeah, I I don't know. I know there's some problems with PPOE. But this is the video. I don't know. I'm going to put Fill some LED in. lights in. Rewind. And this uh, is, this is a what it looks like video. from the side. That's a I can now spare netgate box. That is a match but, uh, for the netgate box our up here. Just in. in case something dies. And you want to make sure can you pause, you can't that you have a small short. There we go. How do you rewind a short? Do you reload the page? Other than adding a few more stickers, I think our production but, uh, This is just me showing off our production stats lab. So got work. stickers, but I took the side panel off because we had to put some LED lights Even in. We have for it all. And those are all, uh, what do you call it? DAC cables in there. You can't rewind. Yeah, that's stupid. RGB all the things. You can rewind. You can't rewind. You can, I don't know. Shorts is confusing. There are some crazy sophisticated attacks. I don't know of all master attack flow. Rather, they use things like repeated upload attempts, constantly retrying everything from a site. Oh, yeah, there's other versions of DDoS. There's 
sometimes just weird flaws where people find that if they upload a certain file, it will cause your system just to hang and they don't have to even put much effort into it. Like if they're trying to upload to a site, let's say you have a WordPress site and there's some uploads on there and someone finds some clever way to stop it from working by pushing an upload that doesn't, that just keeps breaking it. I don't know. That's a thing too. Um, anyways, the part that people are really laughing and, uh, about. This is what it looks like from yeah, the side. I, that's a spare. I think you just have to appreciate. Match for and the I, I give you a link to the video. Here, someone noticed that this is on there. So uh, that is the, for those of you, hopefully I have some Silicon Valley fans in here. Uh, find a good high-res version of it. Where's the good? I like the fact that you can. There we go. This is the uh, Gavin special signature box. <laughs> yeah, zip bombs are one of those. Uh, orange deck cables. Uh, wait. Right click your L watch rewind. Lots of missing features and shorts. Yeah. But yes, that, that is the um, Gavin special. We 3D printed it too because we, we used two different pieces because we are big Silicon Valley fans. So <laughs> we have the Gavin signature on here. So, <laughs> uh, yes, there's no way I, I got a, I, I'm, I was really a fan of the show. So just for context, you know, Gavin's signature box. If you haven't watched uh, Silicon Valley, please watch it. It's great. It's, it's really enjoyable. <laughs> oh no, my beer is empty. Now what? Whiskey time. Um, I think I should, it's been two and a half hours. So we will wind this down. Is there, Anything else? Speaking of geofencing, I need to block Russia. What is it all about? It's all about having some laughs, having some fun, enjoying it, you know, having a good time. That's that's what it's all about. What is the secret of life is to love and to be loved. Simple like that. So <laughs> Can I take your CCNA? I don't have any certifications. You don't want me taking your certification this. So um, I, I'm not the person to take those tests. Uh, someone asked where I got the orange DAC cables, though. That is, I, I bought them on Amazon. You can find DAC cables on Amazon with different colors. So, but two and a half hours, I, I will, to make it two and a half hours even, because we're at two hours and 28 minutes. Um. So let's go ahead and wind it down once we reach that. So what are those last questions? Let's get Tom off topic. Uh, if you can't laugh in IT, you're going to have a bad time. Yes. Silicon Valley celebrates the success of the inept, both the show and in reality, folks. We're just going to go with that answer is yes. Because if someone says, you know, how does this happen in Silicon Valley? Oh, there's a lot of silliness. There's a lot of silliness in that weird place. By the way, um, if you didn't know this, some of the writer in, in the writer's room for Silicon Valley were venture capitalists and people of Silicon Valley to talk about the shenanigans as some of the plot lines. So if the plot lines in Silicon Valley seemed plausible or unplausible, the reality is some of them happened. <laughs> Definitely can't do a backflip. Um, I'm not athletic. Not athletic. Ath ath athletic. I'm also not articulate occasionally. So that's a that's an example of both. Why PF sense over open sense? Uh, stability risk? Yes. Um, I don't need my firewall to have updates every day. That's not something I need to be secure every day, but I don't need a new every time there's some minor update to every package. I don't need those new packages loaded. So that is definitely a big downside to me um, having constant updates that need to be applied. 
Uh, app recommendations for MFA. Authy seems to make people happy. I've not used it, so I have no direct opinion on Authy. I use uh, a tool called Aegis Authenticator. So I think Aegis makes a nice tool, A-E-G-I-S. Um, but I don't know. That's that's what I think is nice. But some people really like um, Authy. Oh, good. We've made it all the way so I can end it. Because look, we hit the mark. We hit it. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for hanging out with me while I had a, uh, what is this beer again? I don't, Jeff from Craft Computing is where you get your beer recommendations. But uh, I think he would say that Founders Dirty Bastard is a good beer. Um, next live stream will be next Thursday. But I might, I don't know, I might do one this weekend. Um, it, I don't know. I don't it's winter. I don't do as much in the winter. It's not nice outside, so I don't want to go out there. It's cold. It's Michigan. Um, so, yeah, I might do one this weekend. I should probably move the camera. I I bumped the camera, and the camera's a little bit low, and I'm sinking down on my chair. So. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Awesome. That's a nice city. That's where a lot of those, a lot of beers are there. So. Uh, I seen someone said prayers. I'm assuming you mean Jeff Gearling. Yes. Uh, Jeff Gearling. He's been open about this and follow him. Uh, he's had some surgery. So I hope, you know, I talked to Jeff. I think he's, he's had some rough bumps, but his recovery is still moving forward. Uh, and that's what we like to hear. Jeff is a great person. Another new year here. Founder is a good choice. Awesome. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you everyone. And, uh, Wait, Iron Maiden has a beer? That's that's an interesting piece of trivia. All right. Well, have a good night, everyone. I'm going to go Google Iron Maiden beer because someone just said that, and that seems like a good combination of words to put in Google. All right. Thanks. Later.